Welcome to Becoming Heisenberg, it's Entertainment Talks podcast for Breaking Bad on AMC and Netflix. I'm your host Matthew, joining me today, my co-host is David. How are you today? I'm very well, thanks. Good. We're here today to talk about uh, Season 1, Episode 1 for Breaking Bad uh, on AMC and Netflix. Um, What did you think of the... returning to the pilot several years uh, later? Um... It's an interesting experience going back because you're going back with the knowledge of, first of all, what happens in Breaking Bad and in El Camino and also in Better Call Saul. Mm. Um, So it's interesting to go back and there are characters that popped up in Better Call Saul that you kind of hadn't quite remembered. You knew they were in Breaking Bad somewhere, but you hadn't necessarily quite remembered where they popped up. And, uh, you know, you've got people like Crazy Eight that, I knew was a Breaking Bad character, but I, I, it's been so long since I watched the show originally that trying to remember where he kind of fitted into everything mm. uh, is, is kind of interesting. So it's, as I said in when we did the preview, that I, I very rarely go back and watch shows because I you know, re-watch things that, even though I love them at the time, I just don't have the time to go back and watch through them that often. Um so it's it's nice to be able to go back and do this and i was i was a bit kind of nervous about going back and watching it again of like well will it be as good will you know am, am i going to get bored because i've kind of already seen it and when i watched the first episode through i was very tempted to just immediately watch the second episode which is a really good sign I think. yeah yeah definitely uh so did you like it do do you uh think it holds up and all that yeah i mean you forget just how brilliant this show was um uh, and they did such a spectacular job with that opening episode it was really just amazingly well put together um i mean i i remember coming to it the first time not knowing anything about what it was uh, I mean, I, I know you found it quite a lot later, didn't you? But I mean, I, yeah, yeah, I, because I, it had a really weird broadcast schedule in the UK when it originally went out. Because you're going back to 2008, yeah, 20, I think 20th where, of January 2008 is the uh, yeah, yeah, the date was the original. So I, it was either 2008 or 2009 where it aired over here, um, and FX before FX became Fox they were the channel that were running it and they ran the first season and they were trailering it to death and they used the sort of iconic clip of him crashing the RV and then getting out in his pants and standing there with a the gun. That was basically that little clip was the trailer. I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> so, um, yeah. but I mean, I knew Brian Cranston from Malcolm in the Middle, which is the thing he mainly had been known for that kind of comedy. So, it, it was interesting seeing him in a completely different role. And you like, I was just, it was bizarre, that trailer. It was so weird. And I thought, well, this looks interesting. So I I went and watched it and got completely addicted to it on FX. And then for the second season, FX dropped it after first season. Um, and then the second season ran on Channel 5 and they did something really weird with it. It was like they ran it in the middle of the night over christmas the following year it was a really odd bit of scheduling um you know so it was sort of buried late at night and it like ran over the course of two weeks over christmas every day but it was at like 11 p.m or midnight (laughs) or something it was a really bit of weird bit of scheduling and then it kind of completely disappeared because obviously they didn't get the viewing numbers they wanted and they dropped it um because channel five and it wasn't until it reappeared on Netflix that it actually started to really gain traction on the third season. And that was even, that was sort of a bit after it had started to air, you know? So it, it, it was a really odd start to it, but I just fell in love with it from that very first episode completely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Little did channel five know what they had on their hands. Yeah. So yeah, I show that we're going to that. I mean, they didn't know at the time, you know, if their numbers were bad, then, then you understand why they, why they would have dropped it. But, uh, yeah, a show that went on to win many Emmy awards and yeah. Yeah. Talked about, yeah. uh, very, and very, very highly in the industry. Um, I've never said this about an episode before, but I think this episode's perfect. Um, 
going back yeah. and, and watching it again um i haven't got a single problem with this episode which is something like there, there's brilliant brilliant episodes of tv out there that still have little problems here and there i was watching this and i was kind of thinking like, okay does this i've i've spoken you know very very highly of this show i mean calling it the best show that i've seen on tv i know i'm quite young and i haven't seen everything but um yeah i've still watched you know a lot of tv for my age i guess but um yeah calling it you know the best thing that i've seen on tv which is still a statement that i'll stick by um yeah it, it's it, it was kind of that case where like okay is this actually going to be as good as i remember and you know the pilot episode was a while ago 2008 we're in 2020 now when things things have changed and and that sort of stuff but yeah i was watching this episode like waiting for something to be bad about it and just mm. that, that i don't think this episode has any problems um and uh um what 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 we're going to do by the way is we won't spoil things that are past this episode i think that would be a pretty silly idea because it's, it's also yeah. a way to maybe and you want to kind of follow along with us on the journey which is a which is a cool idea uh there's that as well but i'll just say like there's, there's a lot of seeds planted in this episode due to where you think like oh, okay they've set that up for later they've set that yeah. up for later as well um and uh it's 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 so well crafted this show's so good like yeah, yeah it's it's just yeah to call, call, i mean calling it i mean i couldn't give it any higher praise than calling it perfect but uh yeah just so, so many seeds that they set up and things that they set up and um yeah it's a it's a phenomenal episode so yeah. um so yeah 20th of january 2008 uh we're gonna do this once a season because i think it would get a bit old if we did it every episode because uh, every season's obviously going to be in a different year do you remember what you were doing at that point in 2008 uh, not the exact date but like you know no, no january 20 2008 2008 was way before i was running geek town full-time so i was still a full-time web developer at the time um i mean i i think geek town was well, maybe no geek, geek town was running yes just about but uh it you know it, it wasn't i i got it kind of set up i think but um it wasn't kind of a regular thing that I was doing. It wasn't anywhere near the site it is now right. at this point. I'd, yeah. I'd had it sort of running for a couple of years, but I was posting odd bits and pieces. And it was before the air dates uh, listings, which is what obviously the site is well known for now, had gone up. Because um, I think it was 2011, 2012 when I actually started to do that regularly. So, yeah, I mean, very kind of different world. Um I yeah I I I'm not entirely sure other than that what I was doing. <laughs> but, uh... Right yeah um yeah Geek Town was a different beast back then I suppose. So, yes, very yeah, much. So. Bit, bit of a Geek Town back um, backstory there. So yeah, uh, for me this is going to make me sound really young. I was at high school. Uh, That's because you are really young. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, still two years away from finishing it because I finished it in uh, May or June or whatever of of 2010. So uh, that was only 10 years ago itself. But uh, yeah, I can't remember exactly what I was what I was doing. I was probably you know that school doing something or or, or the other. Um, so yeah, my life was you know completely different. Then you, you, I think about all the things that I'm doing now and the things that I did then. <laughs> it's almost completely different. Uh, mm. So, but um, yeah, different time. So, yeah. uh, like we said, we won't do that for every episode. We just wanted to get a kind of okay. This this is from 2008. Very different time. Twelve years ago and all that. So, uh, there we go. Um, but yeah, brilliant episode to start off with. And um, yeah, I'm pretty excited to to get into all the stuff here. So we'll do that in just a minute. Hey guys, what's up? This is Donnie, and I host the Adulting with Donnie podcast. And this is not the show to listen to if you're trying to be a better adult. I started this podcast as a way to offload some thoughts uh, that I have throughout the week. My topics vary widely every week. Movies I've seen, guns and gun control, sex, people that are stupid, why I don't care about celebrity opinions, TV shows, snowmobiling. The list goes on and on. I'm always taking topic suggestions from fans of the show, too. So join me each week on Adulting with Donnie as I pour some bourbon and allow you to see the inner workings of the mind of a madman. Live free and rant hard. I'm Chrissy. And I'm Jackie. And we are Killer Fun. We explore the intersection of crime and entertainment every other week. For as long as people have been communicating, they have been talking about who did what to whom and is that socially acceptable? Because the boundaries of society, crime, and entertainment have always gone hand in hand. The more salacious, the weird, the better. From books and movies to television shows and games, we look at how life and art imitate and inform one another. And we can't get together and not laugh. So let's face it. 
there's going to be laughing. <laughs> Killer Fun is available anywhere you listen to podcasts. So join us. Today's sponsor is Kualu. If you'd like to get started with a domain name and a website today, just click on the link in the show notes and it will take you over to Kualu to get started. They also have a live support chat system that you can use, which is in the bottom right hand corner. So get started with a new website and domain name today with Kualu. Hey everybody, if you would like to get the ad-free versions of all of our podcasts and support entertainment talk along the way, all you need to do is head over to patreon.com forward slash entertainment talk, sign up either as a creator or as a Patreon, there's no difference there. That's just the option for either becoming a creator now or just staying as a patron for the moment. And then all you need to do is support us at the $1 level tier. That will get you access to all of the ad-free podcasts that we've done in the, in the past. And get you access to all the ad-free podcasts in that month as well. So it's a great way to support us on Entertainment Talk and to get rid of the ads and get your ad-free podcasts. You can also become a patron at the $3 level tier. That gets you access to ad-free podcasts and allows you to redeem a review of a TV show or a film of entirely your choice. That's one per month for either a TV show or a film review, which is at the $3 level tier. As always, thank you very much for listening. Back to the show. All right, so we open up. Uh, in typical Breaking Bad star with a uh, very confusing cold open and it, this 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 show does the best cold opens um I think as well yeah. uh cold open uh Walt is seen with a gas mask driving away in a desert in an RV he crashes it gets out while hearing sirens as well uh makes a goodbye video and then moves into the middle of the road pointing his gun and then you cue the uh, very, very well known, very famous at this point. Uh, Breaking Bad title sequence, which is also it's a very, it's a sh- it's a short and sweet title sequence, but uh, it's it's certainly still a very, very good one as well. Um, mm. So you spoke a minute ago about like this is what FX was kind of using this kind of like crashing yeah. scene that, that, with the RV. It, it was it, it was probably edited down a little bit, but essentially it was that cold open that they were using as the trailer, right. uh, and and it's so effective because. It, it doesn't tell you really anything that's going on, but it really draws you in. And you're just there like, what the heck is this? So, um, I, and as I say, at the time, Brian Cranston, the only thing he was really known for was Malcolm in the Middle, which is a fairly broad family comedy, you know. Um, and he was brilliant in that. But it, you, it, this, this is... You know, it, so in your head, you're kind of watching this trailer kind of going, is this a comedy? Is this another comedy? Is this, you know, because it, there's no real explanation of just exactly what this is. So if you're coming into it completely blind, which I was, um, I, I as I say, I started watching it purely based on that really odd opening that, that they were tra- using as the trailer. And I was like, I I no idea what this is but it looks really interesting i really need to see what that show is so yeah i i kind of i think i'd stuck it onto the skybox to record i i think that even that might have been a fairly new technology at that time (laughs) yeah yeah different times um but yeah it's a it's a weird one it's a mysterious one i mean like if 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 you're a person that's following the show for the first time uh, but also with us, um, get ready for more of these kind of just just mm. w- weird cold opens that don't explain anything, but then they they get explained usually by the end of the episode. Uh, there's there's some obviously different ones later on, but uh, yeah, like you've you've got no idea. Okay, why is this guy driving away? Why is he in a panic? Why has he got a gas mask on? Why are his clothes hanging off the side of the RV? Because there's his trousers yeah. and his shirt. The trousers completely come off, and then the t-shirt I think that he's got kind of does hang on until the end and he gets out makes this video says goodbye you, you've no idea like what's happening uh you don't even yeah. know that like um was it jesse i think crazy yeah. eight's in there at that point as well you, yeah you're, you're... all you see is the two bodies kind of what you know floating around in the background there's clearly somebody next to him but you don't know whether that's another dead guy yeah, um yeah you know the the he's got the as you say the green shirt which is kind of hanging off the side and he kind of gets out and puts that on and then then that iconic shot of him sort of stood in the middle of the road, clearly waiting for something, but we have no idea what you can hear sirens in the background. But yeah, that's a, yeah. that's a pretty iconic shot. I think yeah. um, him just kind of, he, he's just standing there waiting for like, okay, am I going to have to like shoot some policemen? I've already recorded this goodbye video. He's already ready for like, okay, I've, I've, this is over. I'm caught. Cool. 
and, and all that yeah. sort of thing. So plus he knows about obviously his cancer by then. So mm. yeah. So anyway, but uh, yeah, really, really great cold open um, as well. Uh, then we go to uh, the next scene in the episode after the credits. Uh, Walt supplements his low teaching salary uh, by working part-time at a local car wash where he ends up being humiliated in front of two students that he teaches. These are the two that in a slightly earlier scene um, had kind of like been messing around in his class or whatever as he's as he's teaching. And he's clearly, very clearly overqualified for for his job um and then there's, there's that one student who like drags his chair all the way through to you know the next row or whatever like just kind of kind of taking the piss or whatever um so there's that sort of stuff uh weird how you know he's teaching in a school and then when this episode was on yeah i was I at mean, school <laughs> th- yeah yeah um but the other thing is of course this is a show that could only ever happen in america because in any other proper like you know, first world country, he'd have health insurance, um, or yeah. he'd have health, he'd have health Something coverage. Kind of. I mean, the entire premise of the show is a skewering of how ridiculously screwed up the American system is. In that, you not only you have a teacher that can't afford to pay with two kids, and you know, not be able to make enough money to do that, so he's having to work at a car wash. You've then got the issue that when he gets sick, he needs money to pay for things for his health coverage. And that's what the thing that takes him down the route of cooking meth. And and only in America could that happen. Yeah. Because if you were in Canada, it would have been a case of he went to hospital, got it paid for. If you're in the UK, he went to hospital and it would all be covered by the NHS. It, you know, so it, it's such yeah. a ridiculous system. Um, and the entire show is basically, uh, you know, the creation of uh, of something which could only happen in the US. Yeah. So, uh, but that happens as well. He gets humiliated by the students because they film him uh, washing someone's tire or something like that. Uh, he then goes home on his fiftieth birthday. Walt returns home uh, to a surprise party arranged by Skylar. Uh, he's he's quite genuinely surprised as well, which is which yes. is interesting. Um, and all that stuff happens. He, uh, you know, we get introduced to Maria and we get introduced to Hank. Yeah. Um, and in actual fact, it's at that party where he gets the idea for cooking meth. Yeah. And it's actually because they're sat watching the TV and uh, Hank is being Hank and being kind of all bravado and he's talking to some friends and he's passing the his gun around. I mean, he's emptied it, but he is passing the gun around and, you know, Walt Genius kind of impressed by it and sort of you know Walt's trying to to look like a you know more confident than he is and he's like oh it's heavy you know he's kind of holding the gun but there is a raid that takes place on the tv uh of of Hank having taken down this drug ring and he's going you know there's like 750 how much money there is to be made in this and he actually says you know a lot of money to be made until we catch you and, and it's Hank showing off about it that is the thing that really plants the seed in Walt's brain of of hang on a minute I could make a lot of money cooking meth so yeah so again it's a really great setup um for for all of that just yeah Hank just like really showing himself up and kind of t- taking as many jabs literally as many jabs as he can at his brother like oh yeah yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, oh yeah it's a heavy gun that's that's why it's for men or whatever and like yeah him him saying to him like oh do you want to come along on, on this ride along and uh him kind of saying to him like oh you know maybe one day and he's like oh you should get some excitement in your life like at, at his 50th birthday when you know quite a, yeah quite a common thing among men uh, like sometimes when they get to the age is the whole midlife crisis kind of thing which does get brought up in the episode and yeah. um yeah that's that's all kind of emphasized and Walt's getting older and like is he getting more boring you find out that the episode no basically because he's, <laughs> yeah, he's set up a trying to set up a drug empire um and uh yeah i i think it's it's played out really well really good acting by everyone in the scene and um yeah you also get it's it's also a really nice way of introducing everybody because all the main kind of family characters are introduced at that party and you get some idea of what they're like from little bits of snippets of the conversation like you know uh, marie kind of you know being fussy and annoying and skylar and you know walt I, I, and you, you know you you get this 
sort of baseline of what their personalities are for that it, it just all it just gives you this nice sort of surface of these are what all the characters are like mm-hmm. it's yeah. brilliantly written. yeah absolutely uh so walt does return home to surprise uh, party by uh arranged by skylar the following day he collapses at um the car wash and is raced to keeps this um news from his family and from Skylar, uh, Skylar's sister Marie Schrader and her husband Hank, a DEA agent, which is two ca- the two characters we just talked about, so yeah, um, yeah. I'm not gonna say what it is in this scene necessarily, but there's somebody very, I think notable at the car wash, which um, the show will go to later, but I'm not gonna talk <laughs> about who that potentially is I th- you know who I'm talking about, don't you? I think. I'm trying to remember, yeah. yes I'll, I'll uh, get you off the air as well so, yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, I, I thought that was another really good seed that was planted, and yeah, it's just it. It is. It's a basic setup for the show that the show just still pulls off really well. Like, okay, this guy gets cancer. He's a he's a chemistry teacher. He knows how to make certain stuff. His brother Hank basically accidentally tells him, like, okay, this is how much this stuff is worth, and it's from Crystal Meth, and he knows that he can make. Uh, Walt knows that he can make this crystal meth and he sees that there's the money there and then he starts thinking about, you know, the whole idea kind of clicks together. So it's done really, really well. And um, yeah, so pretty good stuff Mm. with that. Uh, After returning to work at the car wash, Walt suddenly lashes out at his boss who has really big eyebrows and gets told so. (laughs) Uh, At the job, having earlier seen a news report showing a large amount of money um, recovered from one of Hank's uh, drug busts, Walt takes up the previous offer to go on a ride along as Hank and his uh, partner Stephen Gomez, or Gomi, which is his kind of nickname, raid a known meth lab. I'm just going to pause there for a minute. So yeah, walks away from his, his car wash job. Um, does actually point out like um, like screw you and your big eyebrows or whatever he says, <laughs> yeah. which I thought was great. Um, and then yeah, even like he takes he hits like a bunch of the stuff that's that's hung up on the wall or whatever. I'm assuming that's a bunch of car wash parts or something like that. And uh, yeah, he leaves for his job, and then he he decides yeah he's going to kind of move forward a little bit um, and uh, go on this this uh, ride long thing mm. with, with Hank, which is where we see of course more of the character of Hank. So I think uh, Hank's displayed better in this in the second scene because it's more about like you, you can see obviously, obviously he's got a massive ego you know he goes to his brother's yeah. surprise party and then he, and then he tries to poke poke fun at him every single time and then you get this scene later where it's a bit more quiet you know Hank's more focused on the job than poking fun at his brother and um, yeah just, just him and Goma him and I'm just gonna say Gomi for you know simplicity yeah. or whatever hing and gomi kind of like you know uh making this bet about like what what race the guy is i think and then they yeah, like, sort of slightly yeah. get it wrong and then they sort that out i thought that was a good sort of bit of like banter between the two of them and it really does show that like it does show a big contrast between like okay walt's kind of hit this midlife crisis he's not getting on that great at the school he's getting kind of like you know pushed around or whatever and then obviously his car wash job didn't go very well at all he's quit that he's decided to kind of move on and move forward and then you see his brother's side of the things where he genuinely really enjoys like taking these people down and like even doing these little bets with his 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 body cop or whatever um shows a shows a cool contrast between the two of them and i do think that this scene also opens water up a lot more as well so yeah and again you get it, it's so beautifully played as well because you get this impression that Walt doesn't still hasn't quite formulated for you know got the kind of formula in his head of you know he's obviously had the idea of I could cook meth and make money but has no idea how to do it and he you know he he knows obviously the chemistry of it but he wouldn't have zero idea how to sell or you know any of that side of stuff and you so clearly the idea is ticking over in his head but yeah but he's he's still formulating it and that's why he goes on the ride along and you kind of it's just this this slow kind of beginning of this corruption that that suddenly starts and you know that's the sort of point where where it 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 starts this very kind of five season long roll downhill you know Mm -hmm. yeah I do like the little touch as well. Uh, just before they, just before Hank and Gomi um, go in, they sh- they do show this little scene of this guy in there, and I just thought just the way he's like because he's listening to music and that he's a bit distracted, and then he hears them come in too late, basically. Mm. And just the way this guy's like tripping up all over the place, I just thought was great as well. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's clearly not got himself like 
very well organized but um yeah i thought that was a that was a cool little touch because we do see him later of course as well so he's uh kind of relevant uh, but as the DEA agents clear the clear uh, out the house, Walt observes his former student uh, Jesse Pinkman sneaking out a back window, uh, and then they have a little exchange. He runs off. Uh, Jesse runs off. Walt stays in the car. Uh, actually, he doesn't stay in the car. But uh, mm. yeah, that happens as well. They kind of meet for the first time. They recognise each other straight away, which is which is kind of cool. Um, and uh, yeah, I thought that was a that was a cool yeah. little introduction to what kind of character Jesse is. I thought. Yeah, because I mean, it, 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 you sort of said sneaking out a back window. He's not actually sneaking out a back window of the drug raid house. He's sneaking out a back window of the neighbor's house where yeah. he's banging the banging the kind of married, presumably wife of one of the neighbors. So, so yeah, um, yeah, it, it's it, so yes, it's kind of Walt spots him and is like Pinkman. So it's that sort of first meeting of the pair of them and uh, yeah jesse spots him and he's like shh quick cut quiet you know um so yeah i i thought that was that's a really nice interaction and a good introduction to jesse there Hmm. and you think like even a scene as simple as this if he calls out jesse and he gets arrested we get an entirely different show yeah basically so absolutely yeah but uh, i thought that was good so a good way to to introduce a character as as well uh, Walt tracks down Jesse's address and blackmails him into helping him produce uh, crystal meth without revealing why exactly. Because he he like worried about uh, Jesse's worried about Walt of like okay if you've gone crazy or like there's yeah. literally the kind of words he says like I need to know about that kind of stuff and I'm like yeah he basically does like he needs to know about mm. what the, you don't just ask any old odd person to do this kind of thing with you so. Uh, yeah, I thought that was a that, good... that conversation is is the actual point where he, he I, I the only time I remember in the show where it actually references the title because he says Jesse says to Walt, "What makes a guy like you break bad?" Yeah, you know, and it's it's like the only time I can ever remember of them actually referencing the the title of the show in the the episode. But um, yeah. That's a lovely little exchange of him sort of, go, you know, because Walt turns up and he's he's tracked down the address because he's still in the school system. So he finds him that way and then basically blackmails him into it because he sort of says, you know, you either do this or I turn you into the cops. And yeah, it's so. So again, I would kind of forgotten that that Walt had blackmailed Jesse into doing it. It wasn't like a sort of, you know, something that Jesse decided to do. It was something that Walt was the person that blackmailed him into actually, you know, strong armed him into this partnership. Uh, and Jesse being very cautious about it, it was like, why the hell is this straight laced teacher coming to me and wanting to cook meth? What the hell is wrong? Which you know is understandable, I think. Yeah, that's entirely fair. I mean, like, yeah, there could be bad reasons for it. There could be good reasons for it. He just kind of wants to know why. So, yeah, I thought that was good as well. Um, Walt turns over his life savings to allow Jesse to purchase a Fleetwood Bounder RV yes. to use as a mobile lab because they discuss like, okay, we can't do it at your house, and then we can't do it at my house. They obviously can't do it at Walter's house because I'm sure Skylar and Walt Junior would find out very quickly. Um, yes. but uh, yeah they decide to buy an RV you know it's portable they can cook wherever they want turns out that will be in the middle of the desert um, Walt then still supplies from the high school and he drops a couple of things which I thought added a nice little bit of comedy uh, for the chemistry lab that they need for the process as well so yeah things things starting to uh, to get going with these two and yeah. uh, it, this is going back to why this show's so good in some other shows you'd have like two or three episodes to build up to these guys cooking but they cook in mm. the first there's a lot that they do in this first episode you establish yeah. several characters you establish character relationships um you establish you know the at least the beginning portion of this relationship they actually cook their first batch of of crystal meth um we meet uh crazy eight and and the other character as well and um yeah and then we also get you know the whole iconic crashing rv uh sirens scene as well so there's there's a lot that they establish mm-hmm. in this episode and to again go back to why the show's so good pacing and uh you'll yeah. see that with another reason i've said the show's so good is the consistency of that they to, to me at least when i went through this show i think i've gone through it twice before they were separate occasions but i've gone through it twice before and on both occasions i did think that like okay the show's got really really great pacing 
Um, mm. But it keeps it up consistently, and that's what makes it so... Plus, you know, the qualities around everything else, the writing, directing, acting, all that sort of thing that you generally need for a show. But they keep this pacing up pretty consistently throughout the show, uh, at least better than well every other show that i've basically seen so uh you'll see that uh continue i'm sure throughout the season um any other thoughts on any of that stuff uh not only that that i love the exchange when he um where walt meets jesse and he's got the chemistry equipment and he's sort of explaining why he's got particular equipment and you know jesse's going oh we use this particular vial for it and Walt's like schooling him on the fact that well <laughs> you know clearly you didn't listen in my class because of the fact that you know that's the wrong thing to use and you know he's he's still all about the the, the chemistry at that point which I think is just lovely and it that's something that that carries through you know he's he's determined to make the best product he might be cooking meth but he's always determined to make the best meth meth possible you know throughout um and i rather love that and i love the fact that he's a complete nerd about the chemistry just the entire time yeah i mean you get a tiny slice of like backstory here in a way as well because jesse mentions oh no this is the one i don't remember the specific names of the two things but he's like no this is the one that i've used or been using or whatever and then and then walt's like no 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 you what you definitely want to use this one and he's proper like slamming into him for it and like yeah, you didn't yeah. listen in my classes and no you, you never want to do it with with this one you always want to do it with this one and it kind of makes you think a little bit and this isn't something i thought on either of my watches with with this the first time is uh it kind of makes you think okay because jesse's been doing this for a little bit you you, you know that he obviously he knows the, the business side of things and because it was always Walt knows the chemistry and Jesse knows the business and they connect that together and make the partnership and that. And you kind of think, okay, if if Jesse has been doing certain stuff with maybe the wrong equipment, how has that been kind of working out for him? And you kind of, well, I, I kind of wondered about that a little bit. It, I, I think what's lovely about it is clearly, you know, they're talking about vials that you can yeah. you can do things in. And it, it's, it's a case of, well, you know, yeah. You, what Jesse had been doing, clearly he had been making product and the product that we're making had been selling. Um, but this again comes back to this kind of nerdiness of uh, Walt of, of, you know, clearly what, you know, all you need to, to be able to cook the meth is a particular bottle, is a bottle to be able to do it in, you know, do the reactions in or whatever. Uh, but, he's sort of saying well no 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 you need this particular piece of equipment if you're going to do it right and it's and that's the point is it's not not that you can't do it with the other stuff yeah you can make product in the other stuff but if you want to do it right and get the decent quality stuff you know if you want to do it as it should be done as to make the chemistry correct and you know make the best possible quality you need one of these and it it's just it's it's that it's the sort of nerdiness of the science behind it that bothers Walt. The fact that you know Jesse clearly didn't listen to class and clearly clearly didn't take anything on board. Mm. One other interesting thing with that as well is like obviously he didn't really listen in the classes. He kind of probably goofed off or what, what, whatever he did at that point. Um, and you kind of think like so however many years it's been since he left school or whatever or stopped teaching him, they're now back to that same space but they're now older and you know more mature and all yeah. that sort of thing they, and it's that, sort of like I, yeah. I would guess it's that sort of thing where like maybe jesse left school and then walt was sort of maybe like oh thank god that that student's gone kind of thing and now he's back to that situation and they're having these conversations again yeah and uh, i thought that was a good touch as that, well that so. that sort of teacher student dynamic is obviously yeah. still there and yeah. uh, they're still in those molds which is like great i mean it makes for a really interesting mm-hmm. relationship and I suppose for Jesse's side, it's more like, okay, you know, sometimes when you're at school and that, you think, like, okay, I don't need to listen to this. And, you know, you some, you know, people can kind of uh, goof off or whatever. But then you get to the situation where it's like, okay, you're now building a drug empire and you really do need to listen to your the same exact teacher before that you didn't listen to. And uh, I thought that, that, that uh, that's pretty good as well. Mm. So, and you'll, you'll see how that continues to go later in the show. So, uh, but moving on from that, Walt and Jesse drive the RV into the desert and begin to cook already, you know, in the first episode, which is good. 
Mm. Uh, Walt's expertise in chemistry enables them to create crystal meth that Jesse claims is the purest he's ever seen. And that's not the last time you'll hear someone say that. Uh, Jesse drives back into town to show a sample to his distributor, Crazy 8 uh, Molina. He realizes too late that Crazy 8 is a cousin of Emilio Koyama. Uh, his partner that was busted on the uh, earlier raid and now uh, free on bail. So he's the one that Hank and Gomez caught earlier. Uh, but he got released on bail. So that's him coming back into the scene. At least brief or into the show at least briefly. Uh, Emilio believes that uh, Jesse set him up to get busted. Uh, but Jesse promises to prove his loyalty to them by driving them to the RV. When they meet Walt, Emilio recognises him from the raid and thinks that he is an informant. Easy mistake to make. Uh, mm. Leading him and Crazy Eight to hold the two at gunpoint already. They're already at gunpoint. They've barely yeah. started, which I think is interesting. Uh, Jesse tries to uh, run but trips and falls because, of course, he does. <laughs> and hits his head on the rock a little bit, kind of knocking. That's when I think, isn't that why he's got the uh, black eye thing or the, the kind of bruise? I didn't yes, really I catch that the first time. I think so, but, yes. Yeah, he, he hits himself, whatever. Uh, knocking himself out, Walt barters for his life by offering to show them. Um, how he produced the meth um, because basically he's the only one that knows to do it and if they kill him they'll only have a certain amount of supply as well Um, as they watch Walt inside the RV Emilio uh, flicks away a cigarette outside which will come back later which causes a bush uh, fire to ignite the two hold Walt at gunpoint and force him to to cook meth but Walt instead uh, synthesizes something gas i'm not going to attempt to read what Phos- that says phosphine it's phosphine gas yeah. with a uh, red uh phosphorus uh which causes emilio and crazy to pass out and there's also a little mini explosion of sorts and after they inhale it so quite a bit to talk about here you are we are introduced to crazy eight this time uh and he's got obviously his his cousin uh emilio from the previous scene so a good way to kind of connect that together as well i thought was good uh and a, and a good way because we've this is now showing more of jesse's side of things and more of the past of that because we've seen with walter yes he's you know th- he was the teacher he knows the chemistry we've seen all that established in the episode they had the conversation a little bit earlier the one we just talked about with the two vile things now we get to see jesse's side a bit more which is much more about the business and about like okay uh who do you trust who don't you trust and then bringing Emilio and Crazy Eight into that. I thought I just yeah I thought that was a good way to a good again pacing in terms of pacing a good way to uh, establish both of these characters in separate scenes as well and then kind of establish them together and how that kind of works out partnership wise because you you see both of their kind of qualities because Jesse's not as good with the cooking but Walter is. Walter doesn't really know the business but he's clearly a good negotiator because the conversation because he avoids them both getting shot. Mm-hmm. and killed and then you know they they you know would then drive off with the rv and the the uh limited supply of meth but um yeah i thought it was it, it was a really good way to show their two sides of things um and to also show a little bit of clumsiness from jesse just like a slight bit like he's not stupid but like him kind of tripping up or whatever it, it kind of yeah. adds a little bit to that as well and then kind of switching back to walter and then seeing like okay they they've no idea what he's gonna make here. Like they they haven't got a clue. They can maybe guess as to certain things he's using, I suppose. But he then makes this little like mini explosion kind of thing and makes them pass out, and then they both kind of get away and stuff. Um, yeah. So it's a really great way to kind of click everything together for what they're going for here. So what do you think? Yeah, it's it's a lovely, really interesting scene. It's a great introduction of of uh, Crazy Eight and uh, you know, Emilio there as well. And you know, it's entirely understandable that they don't trust Walt because, as you say, some Emilio recognizes him and saw him with the DEA. What else could he be other than an informant? Yeah, you know that yeah. that makes perfect sense. Um, so, yeah, you've got that, and then you've you've got. Um, the point where Walter kind of has this idea of bargaining for his life and then again using the chemistry to his advantage because he's going in there and cooking and they don't really understand it so you know he's sort of supposed to be showing them this this way of this method of creating this clear meth and then uses that to to create this phosphine gas that knocks them out um it it's just showing that he's using his brain over muscle at this point to to get him out of a situation but he's clearly not an idiot and he's clearly you know he's he's not the the heisenberg character that we come to know much later on but he is um, you know, he's he's kind of got some street smarts about him, despite the fact that he's a very straight-laced teacher at this point. Mm-hmm. 
Because if you look at both characters, like you've got the weakness, which is the nervousness of, of Walter, which will obviously change a bit later. But he's got like the, the really strong chemistry stuff going for him and how to make stuff to, to get away from people in certain situations. And plus, he's always got this, I guess, bargaining chip of like, okay, if you as the, the drug dealer want to kill me because I've potentially screwed you over with the whole Hank DEA brother thing, um, if you kill me... Yes, you'll get the supply of crystal meth that I've got, but if you keep me around and you can like, blackmail him in, in some way, shape or form, uh, you can keep him around, he can cook more for you, and then that will go more towards, I suppose, your business and, and whatnot. Um, I thought that was a good way to establish that as well. And with Jesse, it's more about, like, yeah, just tr tr get, getting these two guys in, first of all, and then showing, I guess, the in, in this scene, the weakness with Jesse, which is a little bit of the clumsiness. I mean, a lot of people can trip over certain things and, and that, but... Um, yeah, I thought it was a good way to establish both some of the weaknesses and strength of both of both yeah. these two well main characters. So uh, I thought that was good as well. Uh, moving on from that, uh, hearing sirens in the distance, Walt quickly puts on a gas mask and puts uh, one uh, on Jesse before pulling him into the RV's uh, passenger seat. Uh, still filled with uh, the fumes and whatnot, uh, Walk frantically drives the RV away from uh, the spreading bushfire, all tying back into the cold open. Uh, as shown in the um, thing at the start of the episode, Walt drives uh, the RV into a ditch and stumbles out of the vehicle, uh, discarding his uh, gas mask, taking it off because he doesn't need it at that point, uh, believing that he is about to be captured by the police because he thinks he's done at this point, doesn't he? Yeah, he yeah. Hears the sirens and all that, and yeah. Um, Walt records a message to his family before trying to actually shoot himself with the pistol without yeah. realising that safety was on, the gun wasn't probably loaded, something like that. Yeah, the safety was still on, I think. Yeah, yeah. something like that, yeah. Uh, without realising that that was still on, so yeah, we could have had both Jesse and Walter die, and then we wouldn't have had a show. So, uh, unaware that the safety is still on, so he doesn't try it again. As the uh, sirens near, Walt is uh, relieved to find there only fire engines responding to the fire itself and uh, quickly hides his weapon behind his back uh, Jesse wakes up and uh, joins Walt as they watch the fire um, engines race uh, past them as uh, yeah pass them by the two have the RV extracted from the ditch um, by a uh, Native American man with a front end loader and then they drive back into town making sure Emilio and Crazy are secured in the RV before leaving it at Jesse's home uh, as well um yeah i think we should pause there because then we have a separate scene with uh skylar and walt which is quite important so yeah going back to the the uh, what i mean breaking bad's got a lot of iconic scenes and a lot of iconic lines and, and whatnot but this is certainly one of them and this is probably yeah. the first one yeah going back to the classic crushing the rv take the mask off record the video point the gun i think the, the whole pointing of the gun is is probably the most iconic part um this to me is where I, I remember just thinking back to when I first watched the show, which was the year after it finished in in twenty fourteen. Uh, show finished in twenty thirteen. I watched it a year later, for some reason. Um, and uh, I remember when he was pointing his gun, and you don't obviously you don't. I didn't know what was going to happen at that point. He could have got arrested, or anything could have happened. I didn't know. And then as soon as like he puts his gun down, and then the fire engines drive by. I remember. I specifically remember saying to myself. Because I knew there was a, a series finale. I knew the show had been talked about a bunch. I knew that apparently it ended pretty well. Or, or quite well. I didn't know how it ended. I remember saying to myself, I'm finishing this show. And then, <laughs> yeah. You, you get the next scene with um, with uh, Walt and Skylar. And then I just... I'm, I think I watched the next episode straight away. But yeah, I just remember thinking like... First of all, what an incredible episode. One of the, one of the best that I've seen. And then it, it something about the whole... Just this this particular moment and scene where he's pointing this gun, you don't know as the audience what's going to happen to him, and you don't know if police cars are going to come around that corner and he's going to start shooting, or if he's not, or if he's going to get arrested or shot, or what's going to happen. And it just just something about the character's reaction afterwards, and something about just the way they kind of set up certain stakes and things like that. It just caused me to say to myself, I, I'm I'm finishing this show. It obviously hooked me completely by that point. Yeah. I'm saying that to myself because I knew there was five seasons. I knew roughly how many episodes there were. And just given that I knew it ended well. And yeah, that summer was uh, breaking bad for me. And uh, it's certainly a memorable one. So 
Uh, what do you think of this whole scene, I suppose? Well, yeah, I mean, as I say, this this scene was the thing that completely hooked me into watching the show in the first place, this whole sequence. Because, you know, they, they was, it was the edited version of this that they used as the trailer on FX when they originally ran it. Uh, and it was this entire sequence that, that just, you know, seeing it then back in context of of what actually happened and it's so beautifully put together and you don't know how it's going to end and it, this is going to turn into some sort of shootout or and of course it turns out to be the fire engines but it's it's just brilliant and it's so nicely wound together um i mean this was of course with the pilot episode and when they pitched this first if this was what they sold it on, you can see why somebody bought this series. You know, if this mm. was what they put together for them to to sell it, I is, I mean, it's just a phenomenal, phenomenal bit of work. Um, the the direction is fantastic. I mean, you know, it's not only written by Vince Gilligan; it's directed by Vince. This episode, uh, John Toll, who is cinematographer on it, just makes it look incredible uh same cinematographer that did things like braveheart apparently as well that that guy uh who oh, did the open air episode so you know <laughs> not not a bad not a bad kind of background uh for for that guy but um yeah i mean it's just so amazingly shot and stitched together and edited and i I think it's one of the best bit of storytelling i've ever, ever seen i mean the the entire thing is that but this particular sequence i i think is so iconic and it just incredible really really incredible how they put this together and uh you know i do it to say it's the thing that sold me on the show in the first place definitely yeah so one of the one of the best scenes of the show and there's several more to come so mm. we'll look forward to that but uh finishing off with the episode later that night walt returns home and meets his wife's um troubled queries with a uh you know they he tries to uh, she tries to to get him off i have some questions about that scene in a minute uh and then they do end up having sex and she says walt is that you which i thought was an interesting way to end the episode <laughs> just just that whole scene was was pretty interesting Just yeah. a couple of, a couple of questions um so she's tr- she's trying to get him off on his 50th birthday fair enough whatever i'm assuming they do something well, they, every night well the, isn't this sort of slightly a call back to the because isn't there there was a scene earlier which i don't think we mentioned which is is where she kind of gives him a hand job but it's a very half and she's like distracted do, do, doing it with one hand and then uh, whilst like watching a, an internet auction at the same time yeah and, <laughs> and, she, shouts, and it's, she shouts something out don't she yeah she shouts then... yes and you sort of think it's related to him but it's not it's the fact that she's run the auction so <laughs> so this is the sort of complete mirror opposite of that where he is where, where where he's you know she's she's got these sort of troubling inquiries about like you know she where thinks you? going yeah. through, where were you she thinks he's going through some sort of mid like crisis uh, and you know then he comes on to her and you know, they start to have sex and she kind of comes out with that Walt is that you because clearly their sex life has been dead for <laughs> for a reasonable length of time you certainly the impression you get earlier so uh, so yes i i think it's a it's a really interesting way to end it mm, yeah it's sort of showing a bit of like fr- from him starting this drug empire stuff <clears throat> and gaining a little bit more confidence and the way he talks to crazy Eight and and emilio uh in in the earlier scenes and he gets a bit of confidence then then he goes host home to his home to his wife and kind of takes that confidence with him because you really see kind of a contrast between the two of them at at different points in the episode and uh, it's interesting as well because there there is a little bit of an earlier scene with uh marie and skylar and they're kind of talking about like wall and certain bits and pieces about him and uh she does ask him that does ask her like how's the sex and she kind of changes the yeah the subject, topic or yeah, whatever yeah. and she's like oh that tells me what i need to know so all again all connects together really well with 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 all that and um yeah yeah it's and, and it's it's sort of this this thing about you know when you we meet him he's fairly broken even before he gets the diagnosis at the start you know yeah, um yeah. he's a fairly broken man he, you know he's he, he's struggling to make enough money to feed his family and then he gets this diagnosis on top of that and he's sort of dying but in 
starting this job thing, he sort of feels alive again for the first time. I mean, that's the sort of the the way it's going through. And uh, yeah, that so that's sort of a signal of the fact that the the he is starting to live um, in a way that he's never done before, which. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think he's he's a good way of showing it with this last scene. Yeah, uh, and that's how the first episode ends. I've never quite been more excited to rewatch something now. Now that we kind of like you yeah, know, we, we did the we announcement podcast, it. we watched the episode. Now we've done well, almost finished the uh, the first podcast. I'm kind of even though we both know the journey, we know where this is going to go. It's going to be still pretty exciting because uh, other than rewatching, you know, the Toy Story films, which I know is a bit different. Uh, yeah, never really been this excited to rewatch something before. So. <laughs> Yeah, should be should be a fun journey. Um, we will continue with the next episode next week. We're actually going to record it next week as well. So both for me and David and the audience as well, it's going to be the next week, just at a different point in the year. So, uh, so yeah, I'm going to again watch the episode on uh, watch episode two on Monday. Notes Tuesday, podcast Wednesday. Um, and for our audience, uh, tune in with us next week on Wednesday for episode two. Uh, we don't have any feedback because nobody actually knows that we're doing this. So why would they send in Breaking Bad emails? But uh, <laughs> yeah, we will we'll, we'll try and maybe sort something out for that at at maybe some point. Uh, maybe we could do like an end of season feedback kind of thing or. Yeah, or well, or if, if people are watching along, you know, send in your emails as you go along. So Yeah, we can get a bit of both maybe as well. So, um, uh, yeah, you can send those emails, of course, in if you want to. Uh, Matthew at Entertainment, talk.org, Twitter, eTalk UK. There's a contact page and information in your show notes. Because uh, maybe we could read some stuff for, like, yeah, the, uh, it would have to maybe be like a wrap-up season podcast kind of thing. Because even by mm. the time, yeah, last episode comes out, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go along. We'll figure but, it out, yeah. yeah. But th- there's definitely still room for feedback, and we certainly don't want to block feedback for a massive show like this. So uh, do do feel free to write in, and we'll uh, get to it at some point as well. So uh, give us your thoughts. Um, that's it for the episode. Uh, it does feel a little bit weird that we don't have emails, because we usually do with some of the other shows. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to some of that stuff eventually. Um, so I guess I'll go to the outro next, because we're done with the episode. Uh, again, brilliant episode. I said that it's perfect. I don't think I can praise it any more than that. And uh, David certainly enjoyed it himself as well. Yeah. So uh, we'll be back with episode two next week. But in the meantime, you can find everything that we've got on entertainmenttalk.org. Uh, if you want to support the podcast and support Entertainment Talk, we're on Patreon. You can have a look at the $1 and $3 level tiers for instant podcast options, ad-free podcast, and uh, review options as well. All on Patreon, so have a look out for those. Amazon affiliate link. If you're shopping on Amazon, we can get a small cut of what you spend, but it won't cost you extra. iTunes feeds, please rate, review, subscribe to those. Like we said, um search for both entertainment talk and geek town and subscribe rate and review to those uh geek town is of course david's website and podcast for tv and film news up-to-date reliable tv and film news so you can either search for geek town on the podcast services or go to geektown.co.uk um and uh, check out all that stuff as well uh, for other people on here you can find bex uh, i'm sure she'll st- still be streaming streaming by the time this episode comes out yes. uh, so you can find bex trista bytes b-y-t-e-s on twitch uh, for all that fun chatter and gaming and all that sort of stuff as well so follow her go subscribe to her trista bytes b-y-t-e-s because that's how you spell bytes for that name so uh go over to that um you can uh, watch us streaming different stuff. I'm not, I'll probably be done with Last of Us 2, my uh, streaming. Let's play with that. But you can follow me on, on uh, Twitch as well. And you can follow and, um, David sometimes on Twitch. So go and check those out. And also look up for Let's Play Sundays. Thank you all very much for listening. And we'll see you for episode 2 next week. Goodbye. Bye.